G'day folks and welcome back to my lab. Now, today we're starting a brand new Godot 4 tutorial series. This time it is going to be making a 2D platformer in the vein of what you are seeing here, Super Mario Brothers, the original and the best. This is the game that got me into gaming way back in the day. I remember getting the NES for Christmas in probably about 1988. Seven, I'm going to say, and uh, the game that we got with it was Super Mario Brothers 1 and Duck Hunt, and that was the beginning for me, and I'm sure for many others around the world, it was the beginning for them too. This game is iconic, it is classic, and we're going to learn some of the tips and tricks to make a game that uh, performs in very similar ways using the Godot 4 game engine. So let's have a look at what we're going to be getting up to in this lesson. In our first lesson, we're going to have a bit of a tour of the Godot game engine to get everyone familiar with it. And then we're going to actually set up our project and create our first tile map with some basic tiles. And we're even going to add a background color so that it has that sky blue behind it. Why? Well, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, doesn't it? We've got to start somewhere. So we're going to be starting at the start so that you guys, by the end of this course, can make your very own platformer game. You are going to need to, as we go through this lesson, be able to understand and apply how to create scenes and add nodes, but we will walk you through it, so don't fear. By the end of today's lesson, you should have created your project and set up your first tile map. All right, let's dive into Godot. So open Godot up on your machine and we're going to work our way through creating our project, do a bit of a tour of Godot, and then we'll finish up by getting our tile map set up. So let's uh, create a new project first. So we click on the new project. I'm going to call this one Platformer Tutorial. Helps if you can spell. Gee, I'm not having a good typing day. We're going to have that on uh, compatibility and Git. Now, we want to click the create folder one so it makes the folder we need where we're going to have it. And then you just click create and edit. And it's going to open us up into our Godot project. Now, the first thing we get greeted with is our 3D canvas. Now, we're not working with 3D, we're only working with 2D. So, just for now, just click onto the 2D one. And what you can see represented on the screen here in the main part of our screen, so that main canvas, is you can actually see our viewport window or or sort of what the screen would be um, when you load up the game. It's going to be this size and we can edit that if we want to or we can leave it the same and use it as a good guide so we know what we are doing. All right, so like I said, this is our, our canvas, our 2D canvas here in the middle and that's where most of our work is going to be done. But you've got other options here at the top such as script. In here, when we do our physical um, coding, when we need to get things to interact with each other, that's going to occur in the script window here and our list of scripts will appear here. Um, let's keep moving our way around. Up the top here with our play buttons. This play means to run the game, which we will definitely be using quite a lot as we go through. Uh, pause and stop should make sense to everyone, I'm sure. But then we have like these clapperboard ones and these ones here. So this play in the clapperboard, that just means run this scene only. So each thing that we make in Godot is going to be its own scene. So we're going to have a world scene, a player scene, an enemy scene, a... Um, what a star scene, you know, every sort of individual item is going to be its own scene. So we can just run that scene using the clapperboard or we can run the entire game using the play button. All right, that brings us to our inspector window and a lot of our properties are going to appear in here when we start adding nodes. So I've already mentioned scenes, right? So we create a scene and then we add nodes to that scene and the nodes are kind of the the little uh, bits of information or the little active parts. So if we're or with our tile map today that we're going to make, we're going to create a new scene. It's going to be, uh, we're going to call it world. It's going to have a 2D scene as our root node. And then we're going to add a tile map as a child node. So you'll get a bit more um, understanding of that as we go along. Don't be daunted by uh, nodes and scenes and child nodes and all of that. It's, it's pretty straightforward as we get to it. But when you've got a node selected over here, all the properties of that node appear over here in the properties bar. We've also got our node option here, which um, some of our nodes have very specific things they can do. Um, and we can use them to signal our script and things like that. That's what we would do in this one here. Um, down the bottom here is where we'll get things like our animation stuff. Um, our tile map stuff will appear down here. Also outputs when we're running the game and we might print messages. That's going to appear down here. This uh, bottom left corner is our file explorer, basically. So all of the files that we save will all appear here um, and back up to the top to our nodes. So let's get stuck in by creating our uh, world scene and the tile node for that. All right. 
let's make our world scene. So this is what we're greeted with, like an empty slate, okay? So we want to create a new 2D scene. So we're clicking on 2D scene and that gives us our new scene with a node 2D as our root node. Now, it's always good practice to rename those root nodes so that you just keep track of things a bit easier. So we're going to call this one world. We might well rename this later on down the track, but for right now, world is sufficient for what we're doing. So that's given us our new 2D scene. Let's now save it. So control S um, and that gives us our um, saving menu and let's just call it world.tscn and that then appears down in our um, in our file explorer just above my head I think. So this is where anything we save is going to go and any files we need to drag in are going to go here too. Speaking of which, there are two resources that you need for this lesson and you will either find them in the OneNote if you are doing this in class, if you are doing this at home, links will be um, provided through YouTube, through Itch and through the GitHub. So you'll be able to find everything you need just uh, follow the right links. All right, so we've got our world scene, two sprites I mentioned, and those two sprites are our block and our brick. And you would be familiar with these from Mario, I promise you. So let's just drag them into our file explorer like that, block and brick. And we now have those added in, but we haven't quite got to the stage where we can add them to the map yet. So the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna come up to our scene, we're going to add a node and it's going to be a tile map node. And this tile map is going to be a child of the world node. So you see how it sort of comes down with that line and, and then across. So it's saying it's a child node of that node. So our tile map is where we paint our tiles. So we've added these two here, but we don't have them in our tile map as yet. We still need to create a tile set and all that sort of thing. So with our tile map selected in our nodes over here, go across to the inspector window on the other side where it says tile map. Then you'll see tile set empty. Click on that and click new tile set. Once you've clicked on new tile set, down the bottom there is a new option, tile set. Click on that one and it shows you there's an empty list of files here. So we've got nothing in there yet that we can paint our scene with. So that's what we need to bring our block in for. And it's gonna ask us um, if we want it to automatically make um, tiles. And the answer is yes, but each of these is only one tile. So it's pretty simple. And we also wanna add our brick and it'll ask the same question and we'll hit yes again. So now what we've done is we've created a tile set and we've now got some tiles we can use to paint our tile map. The next thing I wanna do before we actually do any painting though, is we need to make sure that when we add our character, which is gonna be in the next episode, he can stand on top of these um, bricks and columns and things, right? Because that's the whole idea of a platformer is that we can stand on things. So there's a couple of ways we can do this, but I think the easiest way, and, and one that's a pretty good habit to get into, is by adding collision shapes to your um, tile set. So when we clicked up here and we created our tile set, if we click on the tile set um, actual icon there, so tile set, tile set, um, come down a little bit further and you'll see there's one that says physics layers. It's this physics layer we want to expand and then we want to click on add element. That now just adds these um, collision layers to our tile set so that we can make them interact with our player. So if we come back over or down to the bottom here, we click on our tile set down at the bottom and we click on select at the top. Now it says we've got no tiles selected, right? So we've got the brick set um, highlighted, but we haven't clicked on any of the tiles here. So if we click on this one here, now we've got our brick tiles selected. Let's expand this so you can see a bit better. Um, let's also zoom that in, hey? There is our brick and we've got it selected. Now, you see this physics here. This is only here because we added the physics layer over here. Without adding this physics layer over here, this option does not appear. So we need this though, because we need to add those collision shapes. So if I click on physics, um, then we can click on physics layer zero and it brings up um, a bit more of a menu. So here we can, with this little icon here, this green plus, we can actually add collision shapes to our tiles. And we do that just by you know, basically going all the way around it like that to um, make it so that our player can't go through it. And we need to do the same thing to our block as well, right? So we've got to select it, then we've got to click on the green thing and then we work our way around so that our block ends up completely 
highlighted in red and then we know that the physics layer on these two things is all set up and just for point of reference we'll talk about this stuff more later but you can see here collision layer collision mask they're both set to one and that's going to be important because our player needs to also be set to collision layer one if it's going to interact with other things on that layer so these are on layer one our player will also be on layer one but we'll experiment with some other layer things later on as well so we've done that we've got our tiles set all set up now what we want to do is sort out our tile map which is the actual tiles themselves right so what I think would be a good idea here is if we get a bit better view of our world. So this is our viewport, right, which we just talked about before. So the, this um, rectangle that is outlined is basically what will appear on the screen. So that's the, sh the shape that we want to add our bricks to. So I'm going to grab our brick that would normally be our floor. And we've got a few different options here as to how to paint our tile mat. We've got a pencil, so we could do it one by one. We have got a, uh, a straight line tool. So if we use that, it only draws like straight lines like that. We've also got a rectangle fill tool, so I could do it like that as well. Um, or a paint bucket one if you want to fill in colors and things like that. But, you know, either your pencil, your line, your rectangle, all of these will do the job. Let's also add some blocks. And I want to add some blocks to, oops, so that happened because I didn't actually select the block over here. So let's undo that, click on the block, and then try again. And just put a bit of a wall so our player can't go through it on that side. Player can't go through it on that side. And maybe just a few things of interest that we can mess around with when we get the game going. Um, all right, there we go. That's our basic tile map. I want to save that now. So Control and S or Command and S, depending on what computer you are using. But I'm not quite happy yet. I don't want to leave it here yet because it doesn't quite have the same vibe, right? The last thing that we are going to do in this lesson before we wrap it all up is we're going to change our background color. Now, in Godot, um, we've got this sort of gray color that is just always there. That's the default background color. And we don't need to use a massive image to change the background um, for our platform, but we can just change that background color and then add smaller images in as we go along. Um, the vibrancy of Super Mario Brothers was one of its defining features. So it's really important we try and make our game bright in ways where it's appropriate. So to change that background color, we want to click on the project menu, project settings, and then in the general tab, come down to rendering and environment, and then click on this default clear color. And that lets us actually change the color that we are using as our background. So I'm just looking for something that is a bit brighter than that, I think. And then, yeah, that'll do for me. So then I'm just gonna close it down. Um, and what we'll do is we'll save it there. Um, and now let's have a look at our must, may, might and all those sorts of things. So our must, may and might for this lesson, remember our must is what you need to do to keep up. Our may is what, if you've got the time, maybe you were able to get ahead, um, a few ideas to try and your might is kind of extra study. If you've really got some time to kill, go and uh, have a look at those might options. So let's talk about our must may might. Well, our must for today is you've got to create your project and set up your tile map because everything flows on from there. So make sure you get that done at the very least. What you may like to do, we'll have a bit of a play around with your tile map. See if you can make some more interesting designs. Think about Mario levels and how they use those bricks and blocks. We will introduce more things later on, I promise. Um, but don't get too carried away because we will be changing things as we go as well. Um, and the might, well, you might like to have a bit of a read of the documentation um, about things like tile maps to see what you can learn about them and what else you can do with them. Our debrief for today, well, we took our tour of the Godot engine, we set up our project and we created our tile map. In our next lesson, we're going to set up our player character, give them animations and movement and all of that jazz. So if you're keen on getting the character into your uh, world to move around, you need the next lesson as well. The quote I want to leave you with this week is from the designer of the original Super Mario Brothers and The Legend of Zelda and many, many others, Shigeru Miyamoto. And he once said, I think that inside every adult is the heart of a child. We just gradually convince ourselves that we have to act more like adults. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.